Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Expat Survival. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to get your dream job in China, whether it be for the corporate sector or for the teaching sector. But before we start, let's go ahead and introduce ourselves. Angelo, tell us about yourself. Hey, guys. My name is Angelo. I'm a single guy from the U.S., more specifically from the, from the state of Tennessee. I'm living in northeast China, the city of Fushun. I've been here six years, and I am an English teacher. And Michael has a really good channel. I'm sure you have a lot of new followers. Why don't you introduce yourself, Michael? Yeah, for those that are new to my channel and don't know in my background, I am living in Guangzhou. I've been here for about two years and some change. I'm married, and I have a daughter, like eight-month-old daughter, just recently newborn. And I actually work in a company that's in the financial financial tech industry. So think of it as like a fintech company in Guangzhou. I enjoy my life here and we're going to go through uh, an agenda. So the first thing we're going to talk about is some pros and cons about having a corporate job in China versus having a teaching job in China. Then we're going to give an intermission halfway through for any Q&As that you guys may have. And then we're going to have another section about actually going step by step with four different methods of finding a job in China, whether it is related to teaching or for corporate jobs. Now, after that, we'll also give some recommendations about if you were to get into the interview process, how, what to do beforehand so you can get prepared and have the most success afterwards. So starting off with our pros and cons, I'm going to share my screen right now. Okay, so one of the pros of getting a corporate job is that you truly get to understand the work culture, specifically if you're working for a Chinese company, not an international company that wants to have a headquarters in China, but a Chinese company that has international presence. What I mean by this is that you can really understand how the Chinese people work, the kind of methods they use to solve problems, the kind of methods they use to kind of identify a problem, and just how to deal with day-to-day -day work environment. The second one is that you get to practice your Chinese skills. So especially if you're working in a Chinese company, you can expect probably more than 50%. Yeah, definitely more than 50% of Chinese not to be able to speak English. Sure, you can use WeChat. They can type and read in English. Fine. But when it comes to actually communicating with them, you're going to run into these problems. So you're forced to speak Chinese. In my case, I actually love being in this environment because it really pushes me to talk in detail with the R&D that they only speak Chinese. So it really pushes me to the next level. Whereas if I were getting a teaching job that was full of like expats, you may not be say exposed to the Chinese language as much. Now you can get a decent salary, but it's a, uh, it's kind of complicated. So when you get a, a corporate job, unless you're working, like, let's go for an example, like Microsoft and they have a headquarters in China. Let's go with that. If you're being, recruited from like the USA to work in China, then you probably keep your USA salary. But if you're working in China, in a Chinese company, they're going to compare your salary with the other salaries of Chinese people. So you can't expect your salary to be that much greater, at least in the beginning. If you can prove yourself and have the qualifications and all that, then yes, you can definitely grow and get more salary. Now, it's not going to be horrible salary, but it's not going to be as good as maybe a teaching job. The next pro is that you get to develop your marketable skills. So in my profession, I'm a product marketing manager. What does that mean? Is that when a new solution or a new product comes out, I manage the product lifecycle and how to market it to the international market. These skills are very valuable no matter where I am in the world. You have a new product, you need to figure out how to market it to other people, and you go ahead and do so and get more sales and reach your target and all that. That can be used in different kinds of industries all around the world. And the last one is understanding the Chinese market. Let's say you want to use a corporate job as uh, like a stepping stone to maybe start your own business and you want to start the business in China. Well, there's no better way than actually understanding how the Chinese buy things in China if you want to penetrate the Chinese market. It is a very different kind of mentality of how the Chinese buy items versus how maybe you may be used to in your home country, especially in like the United States. And you definitely learn more of the ins and outs of the marketing and how the behavior is of the Chinese market for any products. So what do you think about this list, Angelo? 
this is actually an excellent introduction to the corporate jobs and a lot of things I don't know about. So I'm really going to pick your mind with this one. I like understanding the work culture because from my limited experience, um, I've also talked to uh, certain Chinese businessmen and stuff. And like they like to drink after work to get to know each other better or even before. And from my understanding is that there's a lot of overtime and there's a lot of hard working as opposed to maybe a nine to five back in maybe the US. Here, if you have to work till six or seven, maybe it's not paid overtime, but you still have the pride that you are doing something great. You're working to advance a product or something inside of your company. Practice Chinese skills. This is definitely a, ve a very good pro because Chinese is obviously one of the the most spoken language. It is the most spoken language in the world by native speakers. And it's also would look really good on your resume. Say if you did go back to your home country or anywhere else and on your resume, you have, I can speak Chinese. Decent salary. Um, I, I guess I could have a question with that. If you do say had overtime or something, could that salary go up? Is there a way to increase that salary? And yes, yeah, sure. Go ahead and uh, clarify that a little bit. Yeah, so maybe if you're fresh off the boat, let's just say, um, and this is just this is city specific. It's different for every city, of course. You can expect to start at around maybe eight thousand to ten thousand RMB each month, um, and then there's definitely opportunities to advance. It's like a typical corporate job. Like you can get a management position, or you can um, yeah start managing a team and get more responsibilities. And of course, with that, your salary will go higher. Now, I do work in a company that is mainly sales driven. So if you're very successful at selling items, you definitely get a larger bonus, which kind of goes into your salary in the end. So like just giving you an example, if you do really good one year and your bonus is like 100,000 RMB, that's in addition to your normal salary. Wow, that's very excellent. And uh, this question kind of ties in with decent salary and work culture. Is there the concept of seniority in a corporate job? Oh, of course there is. Um, and then this isn't the same for, for every company, but uh, you do have like, I guess you can say a chain of command. So you, you have yeah. like the, the lowest level engineer, then you have the manager, then you have like the vice president, then you have the vet, the president, the general manager. And that actually goes into like a, a good point is that uh, there's times where you don't want them to lose face. What do I mean by that? I'm sure you know what I'm talking about is yeah. if they say something a little bit odd in a public setting, like in a meeting, don't correct them in front of everybody in that public setting because they may not confront you about it, but deep in their heart, they're like, you shouldn't have done that. Instead, how you would deal with that situation is after the public setting, then you go ahead and try and meet them individually, privately, and then discuss it there. And that way they still have that face or that like that management yeah. appeal of being the, the boss, you know? Yep, that's a really good point. That happens uh, sort of when uh, teaching Cernio too. Okay, so develop marketable skills. That's uh, awesome too, because you can obviously take your job and your skills on to somewhere else if you decide to move on. And understand the Chinese market. That's also a great point for anybody that has the entrepreneur spirit that wants to be an entrepreneur and um, open up into the Chinese market, which is obviously very, very big. So, Michael, what would you say? These pros look very, uh, very attractive. But what would you say some of the cons for a corporate job are? Well, uh, before I go into the cons, I just you mentioned something I want to highlight. Um, the understanding okay. Chinese market that also applies. Like, if you want to start a company in the U.S., but you want to yes. get more Chinese sales, you got to know how the how their behavior is to get more sales with them. Yeah, true. But um, yeah, for the cons of having a corporate job. Okay, so the hiring process. So I'm sure you can definitely touch on this when it's uh, your turn to talk about the cons for a teaching job. It is hard to find a job that's not teaching if you're a foreigner in China. I'm just going to be straight up. You're not. There's usually multiple interviews, especially if it's a large company. Like the larger the company, WeChat, Huawei, these these large tech companies. Like you're going to expect to meet the the small manager, the middle manager, maybe even the the CEO and sometimes because they're 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 hiring foreigners and it's kind of high visibility. So it's a long drawn out process. It took me about <laughs> 2 months to to go through the whole process and that was because there was a holiday in between too. It was like a Chinese Guomingjie, what, what what do you call that? The national holiday. The national holiday. And so 
yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty stressful going through the whole process, but it's also like that in the U S for any other job as well, especially if you want to like go to a management position, but yeah, so the, the hiring process is definitely a pain. Um, the Chinese language. So I'm not saying it's not possible to get a job without knowing Chinese, but if you can't show that you're somewhat conversational, I say maybe HSK four at a minimum, HSK three, mm, maybe, but HSK four at a minimum, then they don't think you really mean business. And I'm not saying this as like an insult, but there's a lot of people in the tech industry that just don't speak English. So how would you communicate with them? If you have customer requirements that you need to meet and you need to change the configuration of like a, a machine, how are you going to communicate that to the, to the R&D people? Like, yeah, sure, you can use WeChat, but that's pretty unofficial and it's not really professional. So if you don't have the Chinese language, you're going to be at a huge disadvantage because when they hire you, they not only compare you with your Chinese language abilities, but they compare you with other Chinese locals. So if a Chinese local can do the same job that you're doing, then why hire you? Because they have to go through the whole visa process of, you know, getting the, the work visa, getting your health certificate. You know, it's a drawn out process, which I have an example of how to do that in my channel. But yeah, the Chinese language is very important. Uh, back to my other point is that you get a decent salary. So the starting salary is more than likely not going to be the same unless you're going to be in like in a high manager management position as you would as a teaching job. As I mentioned before, you can expect maybe eight to 10,000 RMB each month. If you're a fresh off the boat and you're in the city of like Guangzhou, it might be different in other cities. Less benefits. So uh, that red carpet treatment, yeah, you, you don't <laughs> get that. <laughs> uh, I, I asked a question, of course I did ask like, hey, is there housing provided? They, they gave me a look like, what are you talking about housing provided? And uh, yeah, so you just get, the only benefits you get is that you get public health insurance. That's every worker in China is entitled to that. Other than that, you, you don't expect any free rides back home, like plane, plane tickets paid for, none of that. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, lack of stability. So what I want to highlight here is that uh, you can't really measure the market every time. So if the market were to dip drastically, you can kind of, you can lose your job. Like it's as simple as that. Um, and it's, that, that's, that applies to the corporate culture, co corporate culture, like all around the world, but it, specifically in China, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty serious, especially now during this time. Whereas teaching jobs, like you always need teachers. Like that's, it's never going to go away, especially like English teachers. The parents here love having like a foreign face teach English with a native accent. And that's, that demand is just always going to be there. So that yeah. that's what I mean by lack of stability. So what do you think about these Angelo? So uh, I'm going to be honest. I'm looking at these cons, and as a single man, from my point of view, the, the the corporate job does not seem very attractive because the hiring process takes a while. So I assume that you have to be in your home country to get this job, or maybe you can be in China too, but you're going to be without a job or in a job you don't like for a certain period of time, maybe a month or two. The Chinese language, some people just find this language to be extremely hard, and they don't want to put in the effort to learn it. And um, and uh, people that whose their first language is not English would probably want to learn English before they learn Chinese. Decent salary, moving to a country that's far away with uh, that's different from yours and your family's not there just for decent decent salary, that could be a turnoff. It, it, it when I look at this, like I said, from my point of view, it's a little it turns me off a little bit. Less benefits, so that means I would have to come here and do everything myself. I would have to, correct me if I'm wrong, I'd have to go and look for my apartment. I would have to open my own bank account. I would have to do all these things that would require Chinese skills and require me to be dependent on someone else. And just, I would feel like I'm bothering to help, bothering them to help me do those things. And uh, lack of stability, I don't really have uh, much to say on that point, but the first four points, um, just from my point of view, it, 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 makes the corporate job seem a little bit unattractive. And my question is for you, Michael, is before um, you went for a corporate job, what, despite these cons, what made you actually decide to go for it anyways? Was it because of family or some other reason? I guess we're going to be honest here. I didn't want to fit into that stereotype and I really didn't like teaching. Like I was going to be like a last resort for me. 
and uh, I, I took the journey with my wife. We both agreed after I did after I did my contract in the U.S. We both moved to China, and then from there, I'll go look for a job related to the field that I was interested in in the U.S. And she really didn't want me to be a, a English teacher because, yeah. seriously, this. And then we'll, we'll probably talk about this later. Is that it's a lot of stereotype here that especially if you go to the smaller cities, oh, you're a foreigner in this city. Are are you an English teacher? And I kind of want to build my skills where it's not limited to just teaching. So I really pushed to get a, a corporate job when I first got here. Yeah. So when I look at the pros and the cons of the corporate job, um, some points do outweigh the others. Expe especially, I really like, probably my favorite pro is developing skills that you can take back to anywhere, your home country, or anywhere else. To me, that's probably a, the biggest point because the market, the job market, a lot of technologies being developed in China are just to be straightforward they're amazing and you get to get in touch with these people these brilliant minds and learn these skills so that's probably my most uh noticeable pro and the con would probably be <laughs> money talks loud for me so it'd probably be the <laughs> salary <laughs> but those two the pro the skills and the con yeah. is probably the the salary hey if you're, if you're a good salesman that salary is nice Hey, good point. That convention is nice. <laughs> yes, good point. All right, so how about we uh, jump into the uh, the teaching here? My yeah. expertise. It's up to okay. you. All right, so guys, I'm going to talk about um, teaching jobs in China. The pros first. I've been teaching here for six years, like I said. And like I just said with Michael, salary is a big thing for, well, for a lot of people, but money talks loud to me. And you can get a very, very excellent salary teaching English in China. And there is a reason for that, the Chinese culture. And the way it is, is that the parents here of the children will do everything they can, put all their finances and money towards the education and the building up of their child for the future. So they will put their child in all types of classes. For example, dancing class, a uh, singing class, a uh, speech class, and, and of course, English class. And a lot of these middle class and upper class um, parents, they have a lot of money. And because the school that is hiring charges more for foreign teachers to be there, they can give you a much better salary. And yeah, the pro, well, that's probably the biggest pro. We got more. You get a very good salary as a, at a teaching job. More free time. So for me, I'm going to speak with my personal experience, but there's some others that have this too. You have a lot of free time. If you're coming to China, of course, you want to explore the country. You want to go out and see more. You want to have more free time to know what China is about. Otherwise, you could just do a nine to five back in your home country. But you do have more free time. In my case, I prepare my classes and that's done. And I only have to be at the school when it's actually time to have class. I don't have office hours where I just go in at maybe nine o'clock and stay until four in the afternoon until I have class. So I have my schedules like this. I work six days a week. I have Mondays off, but on Tuesday, three classes, that's three hours. Wednesday, three hours. Thursday, three hours. Five hour, uh, Friday, three hours. Saturday, three hours. Sunday, seven hours. That's the busiest day. But like I said, three hours Tuesday, Wednesday, et cetera, all that time is mine and I can do what I please with it. Next up, pro, please. Practice Chinese skills. Now, there are expats in an English teaching school, of course, but there are also a lot of Chinese staff. And when you come to China, you obviously want to learn Chinese just for, at least for surviving. But it's also a good tip is to learn Chinese anyways, because it's useful. In the school around Chinese people all the time, that you're going to be in contact with, they must talk to you and prepare classes and do all these things. You have a chance to speak Chinese to them and they're not going to not speak with you in Chinese. And in many cases, many schools provide free Chinese lessons for their teachers. So you get those lessons, you can practice with the staff, with the teachers, and you can improve your Chinese greatly, especially if you study on your own outside of work, say at home, and you combine all that together you can, your Chinese can really blow up. And also the parents of the children, a lot of the parents, their, their English isn't very good. 
So when you do have a chance to interact with them, you can use your Chinese skills. And they're obviously very nice because you are their uh, child's teacher. So you have a very good chance to practice Chinese skills teaching English. Great benefits. So I did mention that the salary is absolutely amazing. Oh, I forgot to mention the number to that salary. You can make upwards to 30,000 RMB, which is, you're making almost, if you're from the U.S., almost 4,000, 5,000 USD a month. And you have to think if you're in a, I'm in a third tier city in China, so you can save a lot of money. So back to great benefits. As an English teacher, this is pretty much a standard in all throughout all China. You get a free furnished apartment, one that I'm in now, free, pay nothing, very nice, very modern, has everything I want, a big TV, a nice bed, couches, a, a fridge. It's furnished. You All your utilities are paid for. So you don't pay for water. You don't pay for electric. You don't pay for internet. It's all paid for by the by the school. Like I said, free Chinese lessons. And some schools even have like um, their own little perks. For example, my school has its own cafe. So like its own Starbucks. And whenever the teachers want to at work or off work, they can go to this uh, cafe and they, we get like a card that's loaded with a certain amount of money every month, which is a lot. And we just go and eat and drink as we please. So those special benefits vary from school to school, but the standard is free apartment, free utilities, and also a plane ticket, a paid plane ticket back to go back to your country after your contract is finished, which is usually one year. And if you don't choose to go back, you can pocket that money. So the benefits are really great teaching English. Hiring. <laughs> it is very, very, very easy to get a teaching, an English teaching job in China if you are from one of the five countries where English is the national language. So America, well, that's not tech, it's not made official, but okay, America, England, <laughs> Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa. Am I missing one there? So if you cut, if you have one of those passports, then and a white pasty face, you can get hired. I'll tell you my experience. I got hired within like five minutes. So you can, and the demand for English teaching jobs in China is vast. It's great because there are a lot of children and the Chinese people, they notice that education is a big cash, cash grab for them. So there are a lot of schools everywhere and they all need teachers. So there's always a demand. You can easily get an English teaching job in, in China. So those are my pros for teaching English in China, getting a job. What do you think about some of those pros, Michael? Yeah, I also heard that um, it's pretty hard for non-native speakers to get a job. I know there's a, a, a list. I don't have the list at the top of my head, but I, I think UK is also one of them. Pretty much if your country's mother tongue is English or considered a country whose mother tongue is English, like South Africa would be one, then you can pretty much get a, a teaching job. But I do want to ask you about um the, the more free time. I have to say I totally agree with that because I do have like a nine to five job and sometimes you have to do overtime but with all that free time does that give you more time to do like side gigs with side businesses how, do, how does that work for you i'm glad you asked that question because i want to touch on what you said about um marketing skills so if you have all this free time something that i recommend and that i do when you're home you can study you can study any skill that you want for example programming now on you can online class for anything so that's a that's a pro of having more free time. And uh, before that, what was the question, Michael, that you asked about more free oh, time for for side gigs? If you have any side oh, gigs. for side gigs. So here's something I have to tell you guys. When you are um, teaching English in China as a job, it's not it's not it's not legal to have a side teaching job um, teaching online. That I am not 100% sure of, but for example, if you are in a, a city, you're teaching at a school, you cannot go to someone's house and teach English or find some vacant space and have like a class there and earn money on the side. Now, other types of jobs, um, I'm not really sure. Say you're a 
a, a videographer or, or a photographer and you go take pictures for people and things like that. I, I, I'm not sure about that. But as far as teaching goes, you, you cannot do that. Okay. Yeah. I was referring to maybe like selling things as an individual. Selling things. Right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you yeah. can sell, you can sell things. Okay. So earning money by selling, for example, yeah. uh, if you go through like Taobao, which is like the Chinese eBay and you got something you want to sell some clothes or something you designed or made, you could definitely do that. I don't think yeah. that's considered a job working for somebody. So yes, sure. you could do that. Yeah. More free time to do that. But yeah, you have to be very careful with uh, taking on other jobs. It's not it's not written yeah, in your work visa. Exactly. And it should also be when you get, when you start teaching English, you'll get a contract. And like in mine, it says specifically, you cannot teach English to anyone else because it's written in the contract. So it's legally binding. So I advise against it because anyways, you're getting a fantastic salary. You don't really need to. So just take that free time to explore or do something else. Or even like I said, you can come home the internet is amazing. You can learn just about anything. Just come home and study. Man, with, with all these pros for teaching jobs, it got me thinking. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, let's talk about the bads. Let's okay. The bads. Let's, let's bads. Look at, all right. Let's start with the first con here. Lack of development. Okay. So I just touched on Michael's uh, skills that you can develop in a corporate job. So if you're teaching English to kids and that's, all you're doing, you can't really say you go, say I go back to America and on my resume, I put, I taught English for six years to young kids. That's not very appealing. There are workarounds where you said, I organized this. I, I, I did, I helped the sales department do that and that, but you're still more specifically, your job is you taught English in China for six years and you really don't have any have any other types of real world experience for example michael with research and development or anything like that you're just teaching english now i don't know if teaching english teaching english jobs in your country are really uh if there are many or if there, if there are a lot of those types of jobs there are some in the u.s but that's probably one of the biggest cons is lack of develop lack of the uh, the way to develop skills that are useful in your home country one track career. So that ties in with lack of development. If you've just been teaching English, you're probably going to keep on teaching English in China, if I want to be honest, because you've gotten you've gotten really good at it. Now it is a good job in China, but like I said, speak for myself, after six years, I've gotten really good at teaching English. I understand um, how young kids learn, what interests them, <clears throat> what they have strong emotional connections to. I know how to speak with the parents. I've watched my boss, the sales department, my colleagues, all the work workarounds of what's happening in a school, but that's all I know how to do. I can't go out and do, uh, go get a job here for, for marketing or programming or something. I might've learned some little bit, little, some of those things on my own, but I don't have hands-on experience. So I can only do this teaching <laughs> one track <laughs> career. <laughs> Tiring. Oh, okay. So I teach kids ages three to five and to keep them interested and keep the, to keep them engaged, you're going to be moving around a lot during class. So you're going to get tired, but not only that, your school will organize things called demo classes for you to go to some location and to put on your best performance to let the parents see that you're a good teacher. And if their child is a great fit for the school, so that is tiring. And not only that, sometimes the school sometimes the school will have activities. For example, yesterday I had a yard sale activity where I was outside. I was trying to help the kids sell things. And I was running back and forth and begging Chinese customers to come over and buy things for my students. And your school is doing this for promotion. And you're going to be one of the promotion tools they have, probably the best one. They want to see your face and you're doing this. You're doing demo classes, activities and your normal classes, it can, it can be very tiring. It's not like sitting at a desk or you're moving a lot, put it that way. So you can feel very fatigued sometimes. Stereotype. This is probably a, a big con for many people. And I'm going to explain what the stereotype is. There's a stereotype that a vast majority of English teachers in China, they have no other skills 
they were, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, they were probably losers back where they are from. And the only thing they can do is teach English because of their face their or their passport and their white face. And this is not a fun thing to hear, especially if some of the locals around you, when you tell them what you are and you say, I'm a foreign teacher, they know that most uh, foreign te most foreigners in China, they are teachers. And the stereotype, a common stereotype is that you're pretty much a nobody and this is all that you can do. Now, I have to refute that if um, this is a true stereotype and you will hear this. But if you do your job very well and word of mouth goes out, the students are happy. The parents can see that they are actually learning. You do your job very well. As far as you are concerned, this stereotype is not going to it's not going to affect you because the Chinese people, they do they do rely heavily on word of mouth. They're going to say, well, wow, he's a really good teacher. He really uh, pays attention to my student. He communicates with me, et cetera. But that is a very common stereotype of being a teacher here in China is that you are a nobody or you were a nobody. <laughs> so is that all of my cons? What yeah, do you think it. about, yeah, what, give me some of your thoughts on some of these cons. Would you say that this, uh, this makes it seem less attractive being a teacher in China? Or what are your thoughts on this, Michael? Well, you did mention money talks and the money is very attractive, even to those like just graduating college overseas, maybe from the U S and they want to get a paid for flight to a Southeastern Southeast Asian country. And they can go ahead and get paid great, get the all the benefits you need. So, yeah, it does seem very attractive. But you're you, you're right about the stereotype. Like, uh, the first question people ask me is, "Are you a teacher?" Uh, like every single time I tell my work in Guangzhou, and it's kind of a reason why me and my wife decided, okay, well, we're going to go ahead and try not to get an English teaching job unless it's a last resort. And I want to ask you about the lack of development. Um. I know this won't apply to the majority, but if you're actually like an enthusiast on teaching children, do you think there's opportunities to build, like to be a manager of a school maybe, or maybe like a principal or a dean of a school, but you just use it as a stepping stone for, like you use English teaching as a stepping stone for other positions in the future? What do you think about that? That is a fantastic question. As soon as you said that, I had this pop up into my mind. So we'll get into this later, but in your job search, you will come across many types of jobs that are actually looking for a principal or someone that has experience with all of this English teaching in a school. It's because the, the sales department, uh, management, all that. They're looking for a principal or someone who can guide or be a leader of the foreign teachers at the school. And I've seen salaries, I kid you not, guys, up to, up to 60,000 RMB just for this job type. And that's almost seven, 8,000 US dollars. So if you do decide to um, follow this career, you can develop in that area, but that's the only thing that you'll, you will be doing. So you do have the opportunity to be a, a principal or a, a leader in a school. And if you have a good relationship with the boss, maybe you could open up a school with her or with someone else. So you, you can develop into this area, but like it is still a one-track area, one-track career. Yeah, and to kind of expand on that, um, uh, just kind of it was on the tip of my tongue. Expand on the lack of development. Oh yeah, so it's kind of off topic, but the the green card, the Chinese green card, the coveted Chinese green card. Uh, if if you ever want to get a green card in China, one of the easiest ways. Is if you're married, of course, but if you're not married, if you make six times the average salary of a Chinese person, you can qualify for a green card pretty easily. And as Angelo mentioned, 60,000 RMB each month is definitely over six times the average Chinese person. So I just want to throw that out there. Yeah, I want to touch on that salary again, too. It's you can <laughs> that's a lot of money, and you can live like a king with even half of that in China because cost of living and food, what you actually need, your necessities are are very, 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 very cheap in most cities. And uh, I know Michael lives in Guangzhou. I don't know how the, uh, it's it's obviously a higher tier city than mine. I don't know how far his money goes there, but here it, it 
you could save like 95% of it. Just put it back in the bank. Yeah. You can do a lot All with right. that money, but, but yeah. anyway, so <laughs> let's, let's get to it now. Um, now we're going to go into the first step of how to actually find a job, both corporate jobs and teaching jobs. The first method we're going to go to is Angel's going to introduce it is WeChat. WeChat is oh. like the, the most famous platform in China to communicate. It's not blocked in China. And that's how mainly people here pay for things and communicate. So uh, Angelo, I'll let you share your screen and you can go ahead and show us what you got with the WeChat. Great, Michael. Before I jump into that, did we get any intermission questions, chats, anything? No, no. All right. All right. I'm going, to, <laughs> I'm going to jump into this real quick, guys. So where is my... Bear with me. Okay, here we go. Now I'm going to turn on screen sharing, and I'm going to talk about WeChat here. All right. Screen sharing is on. Okay, Michael can clarify if you can see this. Yep, you're live. All right, so one of the best methods to get a teaching job in China is WeChat. And what WeChat is, and if you are a viewer of Michael's channel, you probably know, but it is the uh, number one social media platform and messenger in China. And many, many Chinese companies and even recruiters go through WeChat to send ads like you see right here. These are actually real ads right here for, for looking for teachers. And these are sent every day. And like the I'm exaggerating, but in the in the thousands, there's a lot of them. And this this one comes specifically from a fantastic group called Teaching Tube. And it's just a group that was created by the owner of Teaching Tube, where these recruiters can just send these ads out to the foreign teachers that are in the group. And I want to uh, touch on some of the things we're looking right here, looking at right here. This is just one example. So it says full-time homeroom teachers wanted at Joining International Academy. Now in China, there's a new law for the advertisers. They must say, so this is great because it avoids problems for you having a, uh, uh, you can research the place you're going to. That way you don't get into some bad place or some scammy place. So by ne right now, the law is that advertisers have to put in the actual school name. As you can see right here, it's Joining International Academy. And they have to put where it is. So it's in Shoko, Shenzhen, which is a, a city close to where Michael is, a, a great city. So this is required by law. This also gives you access to research this place, too, if you want to jump online and research it by, uh, <clears throat> by um, name and where it is. And here, they always put the salary here. And this is a very high salary. And English teachers, anybody in general, they're always going to be sifting through all of this stuff like this, like, where's the ha salary? How much is it? So here it is right here. And they have to list this too. And sometimes you will see that this is negotiable, but I don't like looking at those types of jobs. But 25K, why there's a big 5,000K difference is that this goes by your credentials and, ex and your experience. So if you had like two ex years experience before, you can probably get this full 30K. So let's look at the requirements. And these are pretty standard. And these are the law that the government has set out. So you can get jobs at a, as a non-native English speaker, but I'm going to talk about native English speakers. So this requirement, native English speaker, which means you have a passport from the U.S., U.K., South Africa, Australia, or New Zealand. I, always, I keep feeling like I'm missing out on one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So ba a bachelor's degree or above. You have to have this, and it can be in any field. It can be in, it can be in a useless one like art. I'm sorry, art majors. I'm sorry, art, art majors. I'm sorry, art majors. My girlfriend's an art major. She regrets studying that field. She says it's so useless. So I'm quoting her on that one. <laughs> okay. And working hours. This says uh, 40 hours a week. And um, weekly, Monday through Friday. So you have your weekends off. This is stated here. Another law, or, or not a, yeah, a law to get your visa, a requirement to get your visa, is in your home country – you have to have your criminal record report, and for China, it has to be clean. So if I want to sum up the requirements that you must have, native that passport from an uh, English-speaking country, 
a bachelor's degree of any kind and a clean criminal record report. Then this ha and you have to go through the Chinese embassy in your country to do these things. Now there's something else that I don't see on here, but it if it's required or not, I'm not really sure if this is required by law, but it is a plus that you have a TEFL certificate. Now what this is, and I took one before I came here, it's uh, in most cases, it's a 120 hour um, program that you take to learn better how to teach, learn how to teach English. So that's pretty much what it is. And if you have this, this is a plus. And here on WeChat, it has some other things, previous childcare, early years teaching experience, strong communication skills. Don't look at those. As long as you have that passport, your degree and your criminal record, you're fine. <laughs> Benefits, a competitive annual salary. So all of the salaries are pretty much this, uh, they're, they're almost the same. You can get very, very high, high salary. That's why it says competitive. And round tip flight ticket, that was another benefit that I mentioned that you can get your flight back home. Work visa. This is very important. You want to have a work visa. And Mike also knows about this. You have to have a work visa here when you're teaching so that you're legal. <coughs> Excuse me. Free lunch. I have that also. Health insurance. I have that also. Paid annual leave. You get a lot of vacation here in China. I get almost six weeks a year. Fantasy tour in China. I don't know what that is. But as you can see, this ad format, this is very common in all of the ads that they put out, the recruiters put out on WeChat. In my opinion, WeChat is the best method to find an English teaching job if you are in China. And you can also download it, the app if you're outside of China. And you can get invited to some groups where ads are placed. I'm in a couple of them myself. For example, you see this teaching tube. I'm in one called USA Tube. Just any group chat that's looking for foreign teachers, you can find it and add that person's WeChat account once you find the job that interests you and talk with them and hopefully you uh, get the job that you want. And that's, uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here and turn it over to Michael. What Sweet. did you, uh, what do you think about uh, using WeChat? Because it's a very, it's, it's probably the platform in China. Would you also agree that that's probably one of the best places to find a job would you could you also do that for corporate jobs it's a little <laughs> difficult Excuse me. it's a okay. little difficult because uh there are groups that say jobs in specific cities like guangdong jobs or guangzhou jobs but they're mostly teaching jobs like to be honest oh, it's, it's, okay it's, i wouldn't recommend rechat to finding a corporate job unless maybe you can follow the company you want to work for like you can follow maybe huawei and then see their careers in their channel on the WeChat channel, then maybe there, but there's no spam of people like agents trying to find corporate jobs for foreigners. It's really difficult. But you heard Michael say it. It's, it's great for finding English jobs. So he agrees. Yeah. <laughs> now I, I do want to raise two things about the, the WeChat finding jobs. Um, the first one is if, if you want access to these WeChat groups, by all means, contact me on my social, my Instagram, my Facebook. Uh, I'll put it in the description down below and we can go ahead and add you to some of these WeChat groups. I'm yeah. pretty sure Angelo would be willing to add you to some of these groups that kind of give these English teaching jobs. And it may be other teaching jobs as well. And maybe not English, maybe like science or tech. I've seen those before. Yeah. And the second thing I want to warn you guys, <coughs> be careful with how you get the job. If it's too good to be true, the agent may be a scam. I'm not saying all these agents are scams, but just think of it as WeChat being a little bit less regulated than you would with like an HR on LinkedIn. And if you think that you can come to China with a visitor's visa and start working tomorrow, let's say I get here today and I start working tomorrow, but I don't have my work visa yet. And then the company says, we'll get it to you. We're in the process. That's illegal. So if you, if you go through that scenario, walk through it and make sure that you actually go through the proper procedures of getting the work visa, get your residence permit, which is the work visa, and then start working. Don't try and get like these agents that make you work illegally because they get a paycheck. If they, if they get you hired, they get a paycheck. Yep. They're really motivated yep. to get you a paycheck. So it's just, just a fair warning I wanted to mention to everybody. Cool. Michael's right, guys. Stay safe and do it the right way. Go through yeah. the uh, legal system. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are you going to show us, Michael? 
Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, LinkedIn. So let me share my screen one moment. Everyone knows LinkedIn, right? Nothing new. Yep. Okay, so we're on LinkedIn, and I'm not going to give you a tutorial how to sign up on LinkedIn. I'm sure you can do that. But what I want to highlight here is for non-teaching non jobs. So you can click on jobs here. doing this live so the internet might be competing with the live stream we'll see and then here you can see it's pretty user friendly you can see the job you want to search for here and the city or state you want to search for so in this case i'm going to look for a marketing manager just as an example and i'm going to keep it in guangdong which is the the southeast part of asia of china And give it a bit while it loads the results. So you can see a lot of openings here. There, there are a lot of Chinese companies that actually want foreigners to help promote their products overseas because they, one, they may not have access to the social media like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and they may need an outside, like someone who's had that exposure to kind of manage their, their marketing. And they can go ahead and look at the different options. So let's say Michael Page in Shenzhen. Let's check that one out. So when you look at the page, you can see the, the requirements. Okay, they will need a marketing manager, global leading biotech company. My, Michael Page is actually a pretty fit, uh, famous company. And then it kind of gives you a description about uh, who their clientele is, the job description. You can read through that. And what they seek. So they seek similar to what, you, what Angelo said. They definitely need a bachelor's degree. Now that's 99% of the time you need a bachelor's degree to work in China as a foreigner. Of course, there's exceptions. There's absolutely exceptions, of course. But for the most part, to go through the full work visa process, you need a bachelor's degree. Um, just want to highlight that. Um, I'm not sure here if it says you need to speak Mandarin, but every time I've applied for these jobs, at least in the interview process, they test your Mandarin. Like They speak to you Mandarin, see if you can speak any Mandarin. Uh, but yeah, you can see different details here, contact information and all that. And then you can go ahead and apply for the job right here. You have your resume ready, of course. Uh, I recommend that you tailor your resume based on the job you want. Don't just spam the same resume to 50 companies. And just tailor it a little bit just so that it matches this job description and all that. And then after you apply, um, if you go through the process, like the algorithm process, the HR will contact you. Two things I recommend, though, about that. In your CV, it's typical to include a picture of yourself on the top right corner and make your contact info very obvious. Chinese phone number and WeChat. Put that on there. I actually got hired just talking on WeChat. They're like, hey, you have an appointment on this date for your second interview on, at this time. And they did it all through WeChat. Uh, they did call me at first. Like the first phone call was a was a call, but they, they really prefer to talk to me on WeChat. So yeah, you can search for different kinds of jobs here, different places in China. And it's a little bit more, I guess, official here because if they're posting these jobs in LinkedIn, they probably paid a little bit to have these jobs posted because they have a, what do you call it? A company account versus an individual account from what I'm looking at. I'm looking at this as an individual, but if you're a company, you kind of have a different kind of features and functions. So um, yeah, that kind of breaks it up like easy peasy. Barney style on how to find a non-teaching job in China. What do you think about this, uh, Angelo? I have a question. So if someone did want to uh, use LinkedIn and go find a, a corporate job in China, would you recommend that, would you say that they're only a, a, a f that only it's best to search for jobs in a, in a first tier city, or can you use this for absolutely any city in China? You can use it for any city, but just realize that the smaller the city, the less likely you have companies that want to penetrate international markets. Regardless right. if you have excellent Chinese skills or something like that. Yeah. Then you might have to do some digging in like in your example with 58, if you want to go into the, into the smaller cities, because if you want to have a company account in LinkedIn, you got to invest some money into it. Yeah. I'm not sure it's hundred percent free. And usually the small companies in those small tier cities may not have the funding for this. And you uh, did mention that you just got this job over the, over the phone. So your interview does not have to be in person. For example, I'm in America right now and I want this job. I can, I don't have to be present. 
Yeah, yeah, you're apt. That's a good point. So some of these jobs you can do remote interviews. So kind of like we're live streaming now. Instead of yeah. live streaming, you'll be talking to the HR and having an interview there. And then they can start your that's actually what I recommend. If you can get the job letter in your home country, the visa process is so much easier. So much easier okay. than yeah. having to come to China, then go to the visa process, then fly back to your home country, then go through that whole pain with the Chinese embassy in your home country, then come back to China. If you can start the visa process, get a letter saying we welcome you to work in our company and start that process early from your home country, that's that's great. So one more question about this. When you go through LinkedIn and um, I saw that the uh, person that posted the ad has a, uh, a, a English name. Of course, they have like the Chinese last name and pinyin. But when it's actually time to talk with the Yeah. So I noticed that. That's how you know if it's a Chinese manager, the Lee at the end of Bella <laughs> yeah. or Beya at the end of Beya. It's Lee. So when it comes time to talk to this HR manager, is it absolutely necessary that you have to speak to her or know Chinese? Or will they talk to you, start talking to you in English? That I, I can't answer here, that question. It's, it's different for okay, each company. Okay, okay. <laughs> because okay, uh, in, in my company, they they would speak to you in the language that you communicated with. So if you use English, okay. they speak to you in English. Okay. But they would definitely ask you about your Chinese level throughout the whole process. They may start with English, but they're if they're a Chinese company, they're going to ask, "How good is your Chinese?" Like that's going to happen. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm going out on a whim here. If you can speak very excellent Chinese, are you pretty much guaranteed to get a corporate job regardless of what other types of skills you have? I'm a foreigner and my Chinese is just, it, it's on par with them, but I don't know how to do much. Say, say that for that. That's, that's, a, that's an example. Can you still get one? So you're saying if you don't have the qualifications, but you speak really good Chinese, if you can get a corporate job? And you have I'm the I'm willing to learn mentality that type of person. Oh, if you if you speak zero Chinese or if you speak no, if you very speak good very very good Chinese, it will definitely give you a leg up over other people. But it depends on the kind of job you're looking for. If you're looking for a very technical, like maybe mechanical engineer, need a master's degree. That's not something you can get overnight, no matter how good your Chinese is. Whereas learning Chinese, you can probably learn it in two years pretty easily yeah. if you if you stick to it. I wouldn't say that for every job, but it would definitely give you a leg up for more broad jobs that don't have very technical requirements. Yeah. Okay. That's all my thoughts on that. Let's move into uh, my next deal here. Okay. Yeah. So let me, before you stop screen sharing, let me uh, talk about this. So this is 58.com. It is the website on China. It's like Craigslist. So you can find jobs, you can find people to clean your house, you can sell things, but it's very great for finding jobs. But th there is uh, under one condition: you have to have you have to have you have to know Chinese. It is a Chinese platform. It is like our Craigslist, but you can find any type of job that you want, corporate and English teaching. And I'm going to jump into the website now once uh, Michael stops uh, screen sharing. All right, cool. So let me uh, open up the website and share my screen. It's going to be in Chinese, everybody, but I'm going to uh, go through it as much as I can. <laughs> okay, let me go back to screen sharing here. All right. Can you confirm this, Michael? Can you see it? Yep, you're, you're live. Okay, so you see all this stuff and you don't know Chinese, your head is probably spinning, but don't worry, we're going to go through this. And maybe if you actually do use this and you don't speak Chinese, your part, Chinese partner or someone can help you. Okay, so I'm going to move in. And up here, right here where my, uh, my cursor is uh, moving around, this is the city that I'm in. I want to look for an English teaching job in a bigger city. So a city that most, foreigner know, most foreigners know is... Uh, Beijing. Let's say Beijing. So let me see if I can find it here. If not, I will just look at. Let's see. I, don't, I see Hong Kong. Let's see. I'm not seeing it here. I'll have to type it in. Here's Shenzhen. Most people know what the city is. Let's go to this one. Okay. So I clicked on that. And now here is my search bar. And here's the cool trick about this. So if I type in in Chinese, foreign teacher 
what's going to show up? Let me type that in in Chinese. Make sure the characters are right. Here we go. And click on this. There should be, I don't see them here, but there are a lot of uh, schools that you can see here and other types of services. So you're going to have schools and you're going to have headhunters. So what you can do is that you can click on one of these schools and find their information inside, or you can go to an advertisement that is advertising looking for a headhunter. And that person is going to be the one that goes out and looks for looks for um, native English speakers. And the cool thing about that is, if your Chinese skills are good, you can go into that ad. I don't see one here, but you can go into that ad and apply and tell them that you are a foreigner and you get that commission as well that the headhunter would have, re would have received if she were to have found you herself. Now, my boss also offers this service to us and if I go out and find an English teacher for her, I will get 8,000 renminbi commission per teacher. Now, here's a school right here. It says uh, Shenzhen uh, English School. I can click on this, and it's all in English. I mean, it's all in Chinese. But you, if you can see here where my thing is hovering over, here is WeChat. Here is the type of it. Here's the type of a language that is used for this ad. So it's English, business English, and here's the name of the person that you would contact in Chinese. And here is the address to this school. And you can also see where it is on the map. And this big green, this big orange area right here is where you would reveal the phone number of this place to give them a call. Now you can already imagine if you're a foreign teacher and you call these people and you come out with very excellent English, you're more than likely going to get hired. And like I said, if you go, the, <laughs> I mean, not excellent English, I'm sorry, excellent Chinese, you're more than likely to get hired. Of course, you got to speak English too, but you're going to get hired. And you're going to surprise them too. This method does work. And like I said before, you can also go through that middleman because you have to understand something. These recruiters that like in the ad I showed you for WeChat, they're getting a big commission just for finding you. If you can bypass them and go directly to the school, like I'm showing you right now, you have a chance to get that commission, get a higher salary, and get hired very fast, especially if you call them on the phone or add this WeChat right here. Now, besides English teaching jobs, you can get other ones. I know I'm di uh, diving into Michael's territory right here, and he probably knows about this website. But just for the sake of it, since I'm already here, I'm going to type in uh, in Chinese. I'll type in engineer. Oop, I'm going to type it in Chinese. Dong Cheng Shi. And this is still in Shenzhen. So let's see what pops up when I hit this. OK, it doesn't seem to be loading. But as you can see, highlighted right here, my search results have popped up, engineer engineer on the same city engineer contact right here and if your chinese skills are good click and apply away and you should be able to get a job very quick and one more thing before i finish here you see this 58 this right here in chinese this means same city and this right here means local um like local service so this is whatever city you target it's going through the file system, through the data, and bringing everything out from that city that you can see. Te uh, te English teaching jobs, the company, non-English teaching jobs, and other types of services. Um, like you can hire a nanny. So it's a very great website. Perfect if you can speak Chinese. That's the only downside. But like I said before, you could have somebody help you. And if you're feeling, if you're feeling good, confident, by all means, go to 58.com. What do you think from, uh, do you know about this website, Michael? Of course, about this website. It's like what oh. Chinese people use to find jobs. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> and there's also an app for this too that you can download as well. Yeah, you'll see ads for this everywhere on how to find a job. It's very effective. If you've got any Chinese viewers on your channel, <laughs> this would definitely help them. <laughs> All right, so that's my, uh, 
let me stop screen sharing this right here for you guys. Let's see, back to, where is it at? Okay. So stop, stop sharing. The, there the we go. Two, the two questions I have, the, the first one, would you recommend if I have the, so the place already, I kind of researched the, the, the training center or the school, if I just walk in there and be like, I saw your job posting on 58, in Chinese, of course, I saw your job posting on 58, I want a job here. What, do you think that'd be effective? Or you lose out? Guys, guys, don't us don't underestimate the power of uh, being able to speak Chinese as a foreigner. It's because one thing, you, yes, you'll get the job to answer your question. But if problems arise or cultural problems arise between you or this and that, <clears throat> excuse me, you will be able to communicate. That's a big thing for Chinese people because they're always saying, "Oh, the culture is different. The culture is different." If you walk in there and you're speaking good Chinese. And you have the passport, you'd be like, hey, I want a job. Am I good? Yes, welcome to the family. Here are your <laughs> benefits, your free house, and your plane ticket and stuff. So it does not hurt. It's definitely an advantage to learn to know some Chinese for corporate and uh, uh, non corporate jobs, teaching jobs. Now, to add on to that, so <clears throat> let's say I don't know any Chinese, right? Is this platform compatible with Google Translate using Google Chrome? I have, well, because I know Chinese, I have never used that. And there are some websites, if you go through Google Chrome, it might not translate. Very, if it translates, you're going to get some weird translations. I would probably recommend, if you go the route where you have a Chinese person help you, if you, can, if you have access to that. Tell them the city you like to go to. They do all the typing and stuff for you. And you can go through those companies. They can tell you about the company. And if it had, they have some time, most of the time they have pictures. You can look at it. And if you're interested in that, then that Chinese person can help you get the WeChat, the information. And hopefully they'll put you in contact with someone that speeches, speaks English in that school, which of course there is somebody. And you can go through the process that way. It sounds like a little bit more work, but. Like I said, if you speak Chinese, by all means, give it a try. Yeah, that definitely helps in all aspects in China. Finding a job, just getting by in life. Um, I was just wondering if it would work. I don't know. <laughs> 58.com and then put on that Google Translate on Google Chrome, see if it works. Because I've used it for platforms just to, like 1688. And it makes the UI so bad because the Chinese characters are so but when you do a translation, they're like it's like huge, and like the screen looks all jacked up, and it's confusing. Well, well what about copying and pasting? Copying and pasting is time consuming. I'm talking about like yeah, the... that's true. That's true. Just click and look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the coding yeah. for the the actual websites. Okay, okay, so then that's great. It's 58.com definitely definitely recommend that. So we'll go for the last one here, and this is an English, I guess. Dot com. It's called eChina Cities. And this is a platform you can find both teaching jobs and non teaching And it's pretty user friendly for foreigners. They definitely have an English interface, which is a plus. So you can see uh, here's just eChinaCities.com. And I will walk you through another example. So here you are, eChinaCities.com. You can go to jobs right here. And similar to the LinkedIn, you can, no, I'm not gonna subscribe. <laughs> you can look for a job. So let me see if I can find, I'm not sure it's gonna show up because can't, like it's hard not to find non-teaching job, but let me say mechanical engineer. Senior executive. <laughs> With foreigners that like it accepts a lot. And let's search. Let's see if anything shows up. You can already see like in the bottom there, it says K-12 English teacher. <laughs> ah, zero jobs, zero jobs. Try typing zero jobs, huh? It, it updated. Okay. Try typing what? 
Okay, no, I see 103 yeah. jobs. You found it. Yeah, 103 jobs. So you can see there's a P off engineering, computer teacher. Oh, okay. These are education related. So I guess if you brown in engineering, you can go and teach. Yeah. Mm, I had a feeling this was gonna happen. Okay. Yeah, it seems like there's a there's a trend here that these are targeted towards teaching jobs. So I would definitely recommend you stick with the LinkedIn because they actually go into the different sectors. But I just want to show this as a different platform. Let me see if I can find marketing manager and let me open it up to China. All city. I hope I don't have to make an account. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see, here's like 260,000 jobs. Give it, oh, okay, 2,500 jobs for marketing manager. This looks promising. Yeah, you can see this is in Beijing. Of course, the bigger the city, the larger the base salary is going to be just by default. Oh, uh, because the cost of living is definitely more expensive. So in Shenzhen, yeah. teacher can easily be 25K, 30, just a starting salary. So that's not even like topped up. Yep, here in Shenzhen, but you see the salary here is 8,000 to 15,000. It's lower than a teaching job. So as we mentioned for the pros and cons, the you know, hit. Yeah. So here you can see more about the job description. International Publishing Group. You can see a little bit about us. They're located in Beijing. They're at. You can go ahead and apply for this job. Kind of interesting. They don't put. Here you go. Job description. So you can see the job requirements. Bachelor's degrees or above. Major in marketing. English native speaking only. Then you can like read through every single one. I'm not going to read everything on the screen. You kind of look into the details and then you can click apply now, just as you would with LinkedIn with an official CV or a resume and go ahead to apply for the job. But yeah, so there are marketing manager jobs, but if it's if you're engineering in Shanghai, you're just going to find education jobs. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Angelo, what, what do you think platform? Do you know about this one? Yes, this is actually a, a, a fantastic platform. Guys, you don't want to miss this one if you're looking for a job in China. So it, it does cater more towards um, teaching types of jobs because the advertisers know that foreigners are going to look at this. It's obviously a uh, English site and it's been around for a while. I think six years ago when I got into China, I was going through this website because I like to just look at different salaries in different cities and everything like that. But if you do want to find non-English teaching jobs, I think you can go up into advanced search and you can tick on something that says non-teaching job. I believe so. If you look right there, job type, non-teaching non jobs. There you job. go. Yeah, you guys can find non-teaching jobs. Yeah, it asked me to make an account. But yeah, you can okay. go to the advanced search and teach for non-teaching. I didn't know that part. Thanks for clarifying that. Yeah. You guys can definitely make an account and check out the site. It's 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 fantastic. I I uh, have a a, a question. I, I'm looking at a lot of different salaries here. A question probably for your viewers, uh, because you're talking about uh, corporate corporate jobs. What would you say is the uh, the lowest minimal salary that should that that is acceptable for a a, a non teaching jobs? I'm seeing like twelve thousand. 8,000, 10,000, what would you say the uh, the minimal, the best minimal would be? So if you're fresh off the boat and you don't know any Chinese, 10,000? Yeah, between eight to 10,000. If you're fresh off the boat, straight out of college, don't speak any Chinese, like that. Okay, 10,000. That That's not a lot. Yeah, especially if what city is this? Uh, that's in Beijing. There's no oh one no, in no way! <laughs> yeah, yeah. The cost of living in Beijing is expensive, and you don't have benefits like the apartment included. I mean, you may in some companies, but definitely not all. Okay, so that's a uh, 
it's pretty low salary. So you'd probably be sharing a house with other people and things like that. But yeah. obviously you, you'll have opportunities to climb up the ladder later on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If you speak Chinese, you can definitely negotiate that price a lot more. Yeah. A lot more. I would say, Michael, that the best minimal salary for an English teacher in China, like the standard, I would not go below this. I would not accept anything below this is 15,000. 15,000 yeah. RMB. That's, that's the, that's the, the minimal there. Now, do you, with that 15,000, is there commission or bonus included in that? There, is there an option for that? I cannot speak for every school, but our school does have bonuses. So we get paid this bonus every other month. So the first month, whatever your contract minimal salary is that you go negotiated, and then your bonus month, which you can get almost up to. Some teachers at the school get a ridiculous bonus. It's like 9,000 more. And to get that bonus, it depends on their class size. So the, 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 the largest amount of students that we have in a class is up to 12. And the lowest, I think, is like four. But say a person has 20 teaching hours a week and each class has 12 students in it. He gets a big fat bonus from each student that's in that class. So you can you can make a lot of money teaching English in, in, in China. And plus yeah, you have the that. benefits too. So Okay, so um yeah that's that's the uh, China. So we hope you guys but also other corporate jobs that may be related to your field of study. Uh is there anything you want to mention, maybe like a, a shout out or some information you want to say, Angelo? Um, you were cutting out a little bit there, so I caught the gist of it. Uh, a shout out. Do I want to shout out anybody? I get. Oh, I do want to shout out somebody. So my school <laughs> has a YouTube channel, and I don't run it. My school has a YouTube channel where they put uh, they just put things from the school, and it's hiring. So if you guys want to find a English teaching job in China. Hey, I'm shouting out my school right here. <laughs> Come work over here. But I got to tell you, I, I do, I do, I got, I got to say this. I do get a cut from my boss if you come work at my school. <laughs> but I will thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we'll be discussed in the description down below. So if you're coming in to the, to the live stream a little bit later, It'll all be put in the description. I do want to personally say that you can check out Angelo's video. He has some very exciting videos about lifestyle here. And if you want to practice your knees, he has ones that go through different Chinese grammar structures and all that. Very cool to look at and help your skills of Chinese. If you want to get any chat group or maybe we know people that can get you a job in China, feel free to reach out to us on social media. I'll put all the We're getting a better life if they want to come into China to have that transition as smooth as possible. So feel free to do that. Uh, thank you for tuning in for this episode. Uh, if you like this, write down in the comments down below what you liked. If you want to see more of this, also write that down in the comments down below and we'll make sure to look into it. Okay, so I'll just close out with my slogan. Keep surviving and I'll catch you guys in the next one. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching. And I'll close out with my slogan. Try your best to be kind to everybody. Be a nice person. All right. See you guys.